let's start uh, with the two favorites, which see now th- th- we see this all the time. You get into these events, these small, these smaller events, the weaker fields. And so this is the thing that we've, we've, we've talked about a lot over the years is talk is when you're looking at the, when you're handicapping these events, we, we tend to stay away from players who are not normally favorites and obviously see see Wu kim now jordan has been the favorite years ago he was the man hasn't been the man for a while um and then see Woo kim at right now at 16 to 1 look i understand why people might be thinking of see Woo kim and if you want to take see Woo kim and you're one and done i think that's a solid choice but i think you would agree yep. with me jared that that's going to be um uh, that's also going to be uh, you're going to have to really think about where you are in one and done because I don't think there's any doubt that Siwoo Kim is going to be the probably the most chosen player this week. For sure, and I think rightfully so. You think about you know how he shaped up for this tournament and the fact that it's you know not a huge prize pool, so you you know don't want to burn I don't know at least someone like Zal Torres he, he he I guess he's the Zal Torres is the only guy in the field where like he's like a big enough name where you probably don't want to burn him at this level event but yeah Cebu's going to be popular again as he should be I I did, went through my research on Sunday night he definitely popped up as a guy I was interested in betting this week but you know he would have had to if he if he was 25 to 1 yeah I would have you know pulled the trigger about 16s yep. just too too short for me yeah cuz it started the week he was he was around that range and that's the reason why I went with the other two at twenty five to one, Noren and Scott, because I like those guys. I like them all the same. But it was like, no way. I mean, I get these guys at twenty five and see who's at sixteen. No, that, that's that's a big sure. enough difference. Plus, he's just not used to being in this spot. Uh, as a, he's almost a co favorite of an event. And look, we we get it. He's made all eleven cuts this year. Uh, nine of those are top thirties, but he only has one top ten this year. So he it's not like he's been in the mix where he's looking and he is the kind of guy that this is basically his mo he 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 could do a lot of top 30s he can do that kind of deal but he doesn't no, he does not get into the top 10 a lot when he does sometimes he pulls off a win so he's just that type of player which is the reason why he's the 45th ranked player in the world um but we know he's probably more like a top 30 player because that's all it's going to take when he does win uh, which he might win, if not this week, this year. The other good thing is he was second here last year after two disappointing tries uh, the first two years here. He went 22 under par, uh, finishing second to Jason Day last year. So, um, And Spieth, um, keep this in mind now. Jordan Spieth, second last year along, uh, excuse me, second two years ago at 25 under par, ninth in the in the first year of this uh, on this golf course, so he has a combined uh, forty three under par in the two events. But this is the important thing: he has one top twenty five in his last seven on the on the season. His last two finishes are thirty ninth and missed cut. And when you take a look at the two years that he played well here, well, in twenty twenty two, he won the RBC the event before, and then when he finished ninth. His two uh, previous uh, starts uh, were third and first, so he's compl- his game is completely different yeah. than the guy that played really well here in 2022 and 2021. Yeah, for sure. You know, Spieth talked. I think it was it was either before the Masters or like during the Masters about like a wrist injury he's been dealing with. Um, and it, you know, it's definitely showed up in the numbers. He's you're not really doing anything well, including short game, which is usually um, you know, one of his strong suits. I, I, it sure seems like that the wrist injury is impacting his game. So no, no interest in, in speed at this number. Okay. And then we've got Day Zalatoris, uh, Adam Scott's dropped down now to 22 to one. Um, so we can talk about those three. You mentioned Zalatoris. He's played here twice, missed the cut once. Um, but his game, he, he showed life at the Masters. But other than that, his, the other three events, he hasn't done much. So that's the kind of reason why he hasn't played that great lately. He hasn't done much here. That combination, being a short number, that was easy for me to pass. But Day, uh, I, the only reason I didn't take Day was the same reason I didn't take Siwoo Kim. Because odds were a little bit lower than the other guys. But I like Jason Day. If I, if I had him in one and done, I probably would take him this week. Uh, I don't care about back-to-back. 
it's already happened in this event with Cage Lee. Mm-hmm. So who's to say Jason can't win back to back? Uh, he's trending in the right direction on the season as well. But Adam Scott is in my picks, um, and he's played pretty well here in the two events, uh, uh, two previous years, including eighth last year at 19 under par. So he's got a combined 35 under par here, and he's coming in with back to back top 25. So yeah, out of this group, again, I would I like Jason Day if I had him on one and done. But I might actually be taking Adam Scott because I do have him on one and done, and I can take him this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Day Day's a tough one for me. He always kind of breaks my brain because like the ball striking numbers never look good, and that's even been the case recently, you know, despite the fact that he came 30th at the Masters and 18th at Heritage. Like he, he's lost strokes on approach um, in what five straight events now, but you know, he tends to do it with his short game and with his putting. So that's definitely possible. He does obviously have the win here. Adam Scott, like you said, good course history here. You know, Will Zell Torres is the one I came closest to betting in this range because I think he's just simply the best player. Mm-hmm. But again, I just Zale Torres has never really threatened to win a, a birdie fest like this where the score is going to be in the mid-20s. So I just, I'd just i rather wait and uh, you know hopefully get the Zale Torres win next week or maybe at the PGA. All right. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, kind of reminds me of sort of like, like Colin Marikawa in a way. You know, he was, that's a guy that seems to really just rise to the top in big events. Yes. But the regular yep. events, you don't really hear much from him. Um, For sure. And uh, that's, that's, that's a guy that matter of fact, I put money on him, I think last week on the PGA, I believe. I don't remember what odds I got, but I think they were decent enough. They might've been like about 25 or 30 to one. And I, and I just said to myself, the way Colin McCarr is playing right now, uh, like, let's say he does really well at the Wells Fargo again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I could see his odds dropping in the teens. Uh, in the PGA. So even though it was only like 25 that I got him at, I still felt that was, that was okay. Uh, Cause I think that he could go a lot lower than that at the PGA. But anyway, that's Colin Morikawa. Okay. Uh, then we got Jaeger Minwoo Lee on Norin right now. They're all 25 to one. And as you can see, I have Norin in my picks. I am considering him for one and done, but I'm probably not going to go with him. Uh, on uh, this is just, I don't think this is the time to take him because he's gotten cold. Uh, Jaeger, I just can't see Jaeger winning two 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 events in such a short period of time. Minwoo yeah. Lee missed a cut here last year in his only appearance. But Norin has made all nine cuts this year. Uh, seven of those are top 30s, one top 10, very similar to Siwoo Kim. Uh, and uh, don't forget, and, and we mentioned this before with him, in the fall, his last four fall events, two of them were a second-place finish and a third-place finish. So he was hot at the end of the year, and he's picked off this uh, year uh, without missing a cut. Also, he's played here twice, both top 25s, 35 under par combined. So that's the reason why I like him uh, out of this group. Yeah, Norin makes all the sense in the world. In this field, he is first in strokes gain total this year. He is first in, on easy courses, as we saw on that, on that uh, top 10 list. He's also first in this field on Texas courses. Oh. Um, so man, he make again. He makes all the sense. Can Maybe he? Yeah, we'll take win? it for one and done. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a great play. I've, I I used him already. I, I think it was uh, at Valero. I used him. Oh. Uh, but yeah, the only question with Norton is can can he win? Right? Because he hasn't done it on the PGA Tour yet. But otherwise, that's crazy. You know, he checks all Isn't the boxes. It? Yeah, that he's it, it never yep. won on the. He's forty one, I believe, and he's never won on the PGA Tour. So yeah, he's yep. overdue. That's for sure. Next up, let's go with Tom Kim at twenty eight to one. <laughs> Tom Hoagie and Sung JM. Now it's interesting that Kim and Im are in the same group here because they're both yeah. in the same boat when it comes to they've gotten off to slow starts uh, this year. Yeah. But now it looks like maybe they're starting to get going again because Im just won in Korea uh, mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, or last week actually, just a couple of days ago, and he was coming off a twelfth at the RBC, which was his best finish in a while. But he's never played here. Uh, Kim, he's played here twice, both top 35s, uh, but he's starting to also trend in the right direction. So I, I, I can't take them, but if you want to jump on one of these guys before yeah. maybe their odds drop again in a field like this, maybe this would be the right time to do it. Hoagie, though, uh, I'm not surprised you went with him. The only thing I was concerned with with Hoagie, who's made uh, 10 straight cuts with seven top 20s and two top 10s. This has got to be one of the best runs he's ever had in his career. The only yep. thing 
was the fact that his odds, 28 to 1, it's okay, but it is kind of a little low for him. And also, he hasn't played well here. He, he doesn't have a top 15, but I can see why you're going with him. Yeah, I mean, I will say this is one of the least attractive betting boards of the season so far. Like, there was no one that really stuck out to me as being, like, a great value. Um, I'm going with Hoagie because he's he's number one in my model for the week. Um, just look at the last 36 rounds for these guys. Hoagie is first in this field in stroke skiing approach. He's second in this field in proximity from 200-plus yards, which we haven't talked about yet, but this is actually a long course. You're going to get a, a lot of long iron shots on this course. Hoagie is excellent at, the, at those. Um, he's second in birdies or better gained in the last 36 rounds, so this is a guy that can make a bunch of birdies. He, again, was fifth on our uh, top 10 on easy courses. And Hoagie is also a uh, TCU guy. He went to college at TCU, so he's definitely familiar with these Texas courses. Uh, so it's interesting now because, because this is important. You mentioned the easy courses stats and the birdies were better gain stats for Hoagie yep. that he's in the top 10 on each. I, I don't remember. Did you, did you have any others that you just mentioned that weren't a part of those two? And the only reason I'm bringing uh, this up, just so yep. you know, is, is my point of this is, is that. If you say, well, since it's hard of, uh, let's say you say one of your stats is, is in the last five years compared to the last year, mm -hmm. and then you look at Hoagie and you say, well, Hoagie's good at these types of courses because you know of this and that, but then you have to look at also, well, how has he done on the golf course? If he hasn't done well on the golf course, then why would I care as much about stats that he's good at that you're supposed to be good at at this golf course, if you know what I'm saying? But that's why yeah. I was asking you well, because two right. of those stats are within the last year, which is more acceptable. Where okay, that makes more sense, and I'm I, I would I would I would match that okay with this. But you see what I'm saying? If it was the past three or four years, I probably wouldn't regard it too well. How, yeah, how, it's I mean, always that's tricky. Me, but I don't know how you would no, do it because well, uh, no, I, I no, care how it, how a golfer plays obviously on the golf course. Yeah, it's always tricky to know what timeline to look at. When I build my model, I, I do longer term form and short term form. I kind of mix both of those and actually lean more towards short term form uh, most of the time. Um, yeah, again, I, I'm not weighing course history much this week. I care more about just how guys have done on easier courses in general. That is, it just gives us a bigger sample, right? Than three years on one golf course. So, so sure. you know, when I say Tom Hoagie is, is, is fifth best on easy courses, that's looking at strokes gain total on easy courses. So basically how, how these guys scored versus the field on easy courses. Hoagie's been, you know, fifth best in this field. And again, that's the start of 2023. So, um, so he's played here once since the start of 2023 and he finished 43rd. So that, that's the only thing. So, but again, that's why I, it is important of course, because it, it should say, it should say that, okay, well, cause for instance, Jason day his first two years here, missed the cut 51st. But then he won. So exactly. it, eventually, if he's really good at those stats, he should be able to put it together on this course. So even though exactly. he doesn't hasn't shown it yet. Okay. Yep. Um, next up, let's go with we've got one of your picks, Keith Mitchell, Shank. They're both 35 to 1. Uh, Dietrich and Hughes are next at 40 to 1. And uh, that's when I have my pick. So we've got three of our picks here. Shank, I'm surprised he's 35 to one. He is not exactly yeah. playing well, and I don't even, uh, I, I don't, and he hasn't shown anything here. So I, I don't know what that's about. But you're going with Mitchell, so we'll start with that one. Uh, Mitchell has played here yeah. twice. Uh, his best finish was 26th, but he's still playing well this year. He's got seven top 30s in his last 11 with a couple top 10s. Yeah, back on Keith Mitchell, I said after uh, Valspar, I was never going to bet him again. And here I am a month later <laughs> betting Keith Mitchell. But, um, you know, short short memory, I guess. He Mitchell continues to hit it really well. Um, in this field, he is sixth in strokes gain total so far this year. He's second best off the tee, third best on approach, seventh best on those iron shots from 200 plus yards. Uh, Mitchell's 12th best and birdies are better gained. Um, so again, just checks a lot of the boxes. I think he's going to play well. Can he actually win on Sunday? I definitely have my concerns about that, but I, I, you can say that about pretty much anyone in this field. Yep. 
Um, and then a couple of my picks, uh, uh, Dietrich and Hughes. I really like Hughes. Hughes is uh, another player that I'm looking at as a, as a one and done this week. Um, I like the fact that his odds haven't moved at all, basically, since the start. It was 45, now it's 40. Uh, missed the cut first time out, 14th last year, so nice jump. He's made five straight cuts, including a third. He's also made 12 of his last 13 cuts with three top 10s, two top fives, and a runner-up. Uh, this is his best run since the end of 21, uh, which was really the time that he just kind of broke out for the first time on the PGA Tour. He's got a new coach. The coach seems to be working out for him, which is no coincidence why he's playing better. So I think that Hughes is a really solid play here. And Dietrich, we don't have any stats on him at this event, of course. but um, And he was, he was he actually finished eighth last week with his partner. I don't know who that was. Oh, it was McIntyre, I believe, right? Is it McIntyre? Yeah. Yep, that's right. Um, but he's got six top 30s in his last nine, two top fives and a runner-up. The last time we probably remember him, he was missing all those putts at the end in the Houston Open, I believe it was, against Scheffler, uh, when it looks like he, he really had a great chance of winning that one. And uh, But anyway, he does, he, he's been there really close a couple, of, a couple times this season, and I think in a field like this, this is a good opportunity to just take a stab at him. Yeah, I mean, Hughes and Dietrich are both excellent putters, and you're going to have to make a lot of putts to win this event because, again, you need those birdies. Um, Hughes, too, by the way, fifth best in this field in Texas. So I, I wouldn't have guessed okay. that he's played well on Texas courses. Yeah, it's interesting you say that with the putting because I remember I was, look, I was trying to take a look at some of the stats in this event last year to see if I noticed anything. And it's interesting because Jason Day, if you looked at all the stats across the line, he didn't really excel at anything. Except the best thing he excelled at was, which was he was the top twenty at, was the putting. Matter of fact, the yeah. player that finished second to him, and I think it was Siwoo Kim, had a really good mm-hmm. week of putting last year. So it, that, that's that's yeah. that's probably a good stat to follow. Is uh, maybe somebody that puts well, and and maybe if they're putting well coming into this event as well. All right, uh, for sure. Yep. McNeely, Hubbard, Cage Lee, the two-time champ of fifty to one. I mean, taking Cage to lead to win three out of four, good luck with that. Uh, Hubbard, uh, he's interesting. You know, I, I was thinking of taking him this week. Why not? He had a good run last week, you know, with his partner. Uh, finished third. Uh, 29 under par in two events here. Uh, both top 35s. He's made all 11 cuts on the year. Um, so out of this, out of these three, to me, Hubbard's definitely the guy. McNeely, uh, he's still, I'm not sure whether or not he's 100% to tell you the truth. So I need to see, uh, before I even think of taking Maverick again, I need to see him contending for a, for a win at some point. Yeah, Hubbard uh, just missed my final card. So did Doug Gim, who we're looking at on the screen now at 60-1. to 1. Those are kind of the last two guys off my card. Just both guys who are, are hitting it well. Um, just kind of, you know, fit, fit this course that both guys can, can make birdies, you know, they're both pretty good on easy courses. So those are two guys I looked at. Okay. And then, um, we got power <clears throat> at 55 to one. This is part of my picks. I, I like power this week for the obvious reason you were saying you couldn't find anybody that was playing well, like that's just really, really well. Well, it, it doesn't, <laughs> they didn't have a bunch of top fives here, but I think he's got to be the guy that has been the most consistent here. In all three years, he has top 20s in every event. He's got one top 10. He's a combined 50 under par. He's coming off at 12th at the RBC. You had to give him some time. It came off the injury. You knew it was going to take him a little while to get going. Now he's starting to play well again. And I think getting 55 to 1 is is compared with the fact that he has a really good record here was a no-brainer for me. Yeah, and he, like you said, he he's playing – as well, if not better than his results would uh, suggest recently, he's gained strokes on approach in five straight, which is, I'm looking through his longest streak in a while. Um, so he's coming in in good form at a course he likes. So it definitely makes sense. All right. And, yeah, by the way, speaking of Doug Gim, uh, his game uh, did kind of – he was on a nice run there. But he kind of cooled off for a little bit. So it would be nice to see if he can get going again and maybe the next time and then feel like this, it might not be a bad take. All right, now uh, Justin Lauer uh, and Chan Kim are part of our picks. Who would have thought that? Mm. But wow. Justin Lauer, uh, who, uh, matter of fact, uh, did, was he in contention last week or did, did he have a good run last week? 
Who was he playing yes, with last I week? think. Again, I, I wasn't paying. Yeah, I, I could have sworn. I, think, I don't I know if he, he had a, I, I, He wasn't in the top ten, but he might have been right outside, right outside of that because I could have swore I saw his name yep. up there with his partner. But uh, he's trending in the right direction. I believe his fourth place finish might have been at Putacana, maybe. So he's coming off a, a really good result his last time out. Yeah, fourth at Punta Cana last time out. He also, he also came third at the Mexico Open earlier this year. I think that's a really good comparison for this event. I think they're very similar. You know, wide open, long but easy golf courses. I you know, the last guy on my betting card also played well at Mexico, so that was definitely something I looked at. But yeah, I mean, Lauer has just had a good season. He's fifth in this field in strokes gain total this year. That includes 18th best on approach. He's another guy, um, 17th best on easy courses, so didn't quite make the top 10, but was close to it. Um, so he, he just makes a lot of sense to me as a guy who's playing well. That should be a good fit on this course. Let's see. So overall, uh, he has really just been full-time since 2018, and he hasn't yet gotten into the hundreds. So... He, like you said, this is without a doubt the best year he's having because the best previous sure. world ranking at the end of the year were the last two years when he was 218 to 215. So now he's at 132. So he's definitely uh, making a move. All right. Uh, and I'm going with Chan Kim. And, you know, if, 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 and I know we haven't talked about Chan Kim much, if at all, on, on this program, but uh, this is a guy that clearly would if he was able to win it would be really good for the tour you know he's got a great personality um these are the types these are the types of guys you want to see in press conferences if they're in contention if he can get a win and show that he's a top 50 player say um but it, this if you take a look at it uh look he's never played here but he's made eight straight cuts with a couple of top 10s he's trending perfectly um uh, including 14th and 6th his last two. Keep in mind, he's won eight times on the Japanese tour. He won twice on the KFT tour last year. He finished second in the point standings on the KFT tour last year, and that is what got him his P. He is a PGA Tour rookie, and I believe he is only 33, actually not only, I should say he's 33 years old as a PGA Tour rookie, and as a bonus, he's South Korean. So we know how the South Koreans seem to really like playing at this event. So, yeah, I thought Chad Kim, if I was ever going to take him, I thought this was a good week to do it. Yeah, it makes sense. Like you said, playing well. Um, he is 12th best on easy courses. He, and wow. Chan Kim also came eighth at the Mexico Open. Okay, so good. I like it. I like like it. it. And uh, another one of your players is in here, Peter Kust. And uh, what do you Quest. like about Peter? Peter Quest. Quest. Well, Peter, what do you like Peter about Quest. Peter Quest? Yeah, yeah, definitely my first time betting uh, Peter Quest, but uh, he just, just popped in the numbers for me, and I started digging into him, and I kind of liked what I was seeing, especially at this number here. Um, so 10th at Valero, 9th at Corrales in his last two starts. He is a bomber. He is one of the longest hitters in this field, which, again, is important here because it is a long golf course. Quest came 14th here last year in his uh, only appearance at this course, and then he is – Seventh best on easy courses, and he is fifth best on Texas courses. So again, just you know, d does a lot of things that I'm, I'm looking for in a in a you know, potential winner this week. And uh, this is actually uh, going to be his first full time uh, uh, on the PJ Tour. So he's a, right. I guess he's yep. another PJ Tour rookie. So yep. Um, right now he is at 169. He ended the year last year at 233. So uh, a couple of players there that you're going with long shots that are having the best years uh, on tour. Uh, another player that's in this group that, uh, again, I just think at some point he's I, it's, and this might not be a bad field to do it. Chances are he's probably going to do it in the fall. And that's Matty Schmid, uh, who just continues to play solid golf. He's made the last six cuts and, and that includes 10th, 11th, 17th, 21st and 26th. But unfortunately, he missed a cut here last year. I, I, so maybe I'll take a look at him in a couple of years. Um, yeah. Elsewhere, 
let's see. CT Pan I was kind of thinking about because he was really good here last year, finishing fourth at 21 under par. But he's got four straight missed cuts coming in here. Actually, four missed cuts before the fourth. And I think that's important because when I looked at how he was playing coming into this one, he's made all five of his cuts, including a third of Mexico, just like you were talking about. So you if you think CT, CT Pan, who was fourth last year, coming in with four missed cuts, you know, was out of nowhere. Well, this may not be a bad idea. I didn't take him, but I yeah. just thought it could be interesting. And uh, is he also South Korean? Or what is CT Pan? I think he is, right? Uh, I couldn't tell you, honestly. I don't think he's South Korean. Japanese? I can look it up. But the interesting thing about CT Pan is that um, – He's 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 like one of the shortest hitters on tour, but um, like you said, he he did well here last year. He did well at Mexico Open, so you know for some, for some reason he's uh, able to play well in these longer courses. CT Pan is from Taiwan. Taiwan, okay. So another got guy, the Asian thing going for him. Yeah, well that 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 kind of counts in a way. I mean, you know, the Asians in general, uh, you would think that. Uh, it's just like saying if if it's Americans like a certain uh, uh, style of play, we talk about this in Ryder yep. Cup all the time. Same thing with any any other um, nationality. Uh, another player that I thought was interesting to keep an eye on is this kid Toasty Alejandro Toasty. Mm -hmm. He's ninety to yep. one. Um, he's playing here for the first time. He's a guy that you're thinking maybe he's gonna sort of break out with a nice uh, win. Um, what, he had a win last year, didn't he? Did he win in the fall, Toasty? I think he won on the Corn Ferry Tour. Oh, that's right. right? I that's don't think right. he has. Yeah, yes. he doesn't. Uh, yeah, see, he has. Yeah, he won once on the Corn Ferry Tour. He won a couple times on the Latin American Tour. Um, you know, he doesn't have a ton of PGA Tour starts yet, but um, you know, he obviously popped in Houston. I think he's a long hitter, a guy that can make birdie. So he, he's he's someone I looked at. Yeah, he was second at Houston. So as you said. Uh, another player that might be interesting, uh, who's a Texan, is Ryan Palmer. Um, uh, where is Palmer on this board? Is he way down, Palmer? Where the heck is Palmer? Oh, yeah, there he is. He's 180 to 1. And that's because Palmer is just a horse for a course. In his last two years yeah. here, he's finished 8th and 5th at 53 under par. And he's not playing well, but he, he does seem to uh, come up uh, and play his best in Texas, um, uh, which is a familiar territory for him. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't really playing that well heading into last or last year's event, and like you said, came came eighth. So, and then you also, as far as uh, the remaining picks that we have, uh, you have one more to go, and that is uh, Semi Valamaki, who is now one hundred and thirty to one. Yeah, this is totally the Mexico Open tie for me. You know, Valamaki was the one in that final group with Jake Knapp in Mexico. Didn't quite get it done there, but um, I think you know how he played there could definitely translate to this golf course. Valamaki is one of the longest hitters in this field. He is ninth best in this field in proximity from 200 plus yards. So again, it should be a good course for him. You know, talented guy who, you know, has played mostly on the, the Euro tour so far, but I could definitely see him winning at some point on the PGA tour, especially in a uh, you know, lower end event like this where distance does matter. I think it's a, it's a good spot for him at a 130 to one. We'll take a shot. Hey, well, Pavon can win. Uh, and, and after not seeing him win much in the Europe in Europe and then comes over yep. here and wins, then yeah, uh, Valamaki, who had just won uh, in Europe before coming over here. Um, uh, why not? Uh, another player, as we round out the long shots, uh, some of these other guys, Bramlett, we know he could hit it. He's played here three times, two top 20s, one top 10, combined 48 under par. Uh, let's see, who else uh, was I uh, taking a look at? Um, uh, let's see, Pendrith. He can hit it. First time he's playing here. Um, he was 11th at Putacan a couple of weeks ago. Played last week, was also 11th uh, with uh, whatever teammate he was playing with, which I'm sure was probably Canadian. And mm -hmm. um, that, that Parker Cootie kid, I know you've talked mm -hmm. about him a, a few times. He was 6th yep. last time out at Putacana. And he played here last year, 64th. Um, otherwise, I thought he could have been interesting. Uh, Skins, that's David Skins' character, who has a 7th yeah. at Houston and a 4th at the Honda, the old Honda, which was two best finishes on the PGA Tour. 
Um, he had a KFT win last year, by the way, 38th year in 2022. I just figured I'd mention him because uh, we're in one of these fields, and he's another guy that has kind of come out of nowhere uh, a couple of times in these types of similar fields. Um, surprising that Daniel Berger has still not had any success yet this season. Um, yeah, it's only been it's only been a handful of events, right? I mean, yeah, I guess uh, I, remember, I remember him. Zawa Torres has made him look bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Will Will's just <laughs> a stud, so it can't all be Will. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Berger. It, it's funny, Berger's ball striking has been okay. He hasn't putted well, which he used to be an excellent putter. So I don't know if the injury has affected that, but. Um, Maybe just some of the, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's going to take some time. I think that's what it is. Um, some of the other longer shots I was looking at, again, I think you could scroll down the Mexico open leaderboard and find guys who, you know, played well there. I think Andrew Novak is someone who played well there. Uh, he's someone to consider here. Um, my guy, my guy, Garrick Higo, I think, um, this is a decent spot for him. He's a guy who's, you know, won a PGA tour event. And then, uh, Nick, Nick Dunlap, who, you know, won a couple months ago, um, and is obviously a talented, young kid um you know he, he has pretty long odds for a field this week yeah it was just uh, seeing if i could see anything there from oh um and who is the other uh grayers great gracerman gracerman was fourth last week with his teammate uh was seventh at the houston open not too long ago that was his best finish on the PGA Tour, that was, uh, I believe, the only other player that I, I, I wanted to bring up uh, out of all the long shots. And uh, there are certainly a lot of them for this week's event. Okay, so um, actually, let me see here. I've got this Mexico Open. Let's pop this up. Um, so, yeah, you got Valamaki with second, Jaeger, Lauer, C.T. Pan with third. By the way, Patrick Rogers withdrew this week, so he's not playing. Uh, Robert McIntyre was sixth. He's playing this week. Doug Gim, eighth. Chan Kim, eighth. You've mentioned that. So, yeah. So, those are some guys to, to keep in mind that were playing, that finished in the top 10 uh, at Mexico. All right. Now, Scotty Scheffler. Let's uh, wrap up with uh, our one and dones and the Scotty Scheffler specials. Um, well, let's, let's just do the one and dones then. So, again, I, I'm going to probably go with um, my four finalists were Kim, Scott, Hughes, and Norin. I'm probably mm-hmm. not going to go with Kim. I'm, I'm leaning against it because I just think that too many people are going to take yeah. him, and I just don't like him as a co-favorite of an event. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of leaning towards either – so it's between Scott Hughes and Norton. Let's just put it that way. I have no idea where I'm going to go. Where I lean today, it can always change. But those are my top three. What about you? Yeah, I'm with you where like I think Siwoo Kim is just like the best pick in a vacuum, but I do think he's gonna be super popular and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kinda of middle of the pack now in one and done, so I do wanna start to try to get a bit different. So I probably will go elsewhere. I think the two guys I'm considering I guess the I I would love to use Norin, but I'm pretty sure I already used him. So I I think my top option is gonna to be Tom Hoagie, um, who I am betting, who again, like I said, is number one in my model for the week, just continues to hit his irons awesome. Um so I think Hoagie will be my lean for this week. Uh, let me see if I notice it on here. Yeah, I think if you took, you were thinking of taking him at Texas. You, I think you, I took him at, what is it? The Texas uh, Open. Yeah. Valero, Texas yep. Open. Yeah, that must have been it. Because you were so thinking Hoagie, of taking him. Hoagie it is. Okay. So you're going to, you're, 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 Hoagie's your top guy. I would say right now my top guy would be Hughes. Because I don't think a lot of people are going to take him. So. He's a long shot, and I think no one's going to take him. 